good morning children we'll be doing the last uh, part of the chapter periodic table we have already started periodic properties and few of the periodic properties i have already discussed that is atomic size metallic character and non metallic character today we will be discussing ionization potential electron affinity and electronegativity now before we start today's lesson children i would like to uh, reiterate rather i have mentioned again i'd like to repeat that i am telling you what are the main points and that i am of course discussing in details but there are various other small small points which you can have a um, uh, better understanding if you read the book thoroughly so i am not mentioning those uh, things that i have left up to you to read and find out this is the best time you can make utilize um, of the time that is available to you now see there are like two things chemical property and gradation of physical property there be chemical reactivity and gradation of physical property that i did not discuss so open your books check how does chemical reactivity change across a period down a group and how is the gradation of physical property varying that is what are the physical properties the melting point the boiling point the density all these things how they are changing very nicely it is given in the form of a table so that table i cannot draw it here you can understand very nicely if little bit with concentration you go through and as i am teaching i already told you sit with the periodic table that uh, so that it is easier for you to understand let us now discuss ionization potential so what is ionization potential all of you know that when um, an atom uh, is in an unstable form it has to react to complete its octet uh, and um, it loses or gains electron in that process now whenever it loses or gain loses or gains electron some amount of energy is associated with it now this ionization potential is the energy required to remove an electron from the outermost orbit of an isolated gaseous atom now when we remove electrons we need to add energy to the atom so that the electrons can be removed and once electron is removed what does the atom become the atom becomes a cation so what is ionization potential the energy required to remove an electron from the outermost orbit of an isolated gaseous atom to convert it into a cation now there may be more than one electron in the outermost orbit so when we and only one at a time can be removed so when we remove the first electron that energy is called ionization first ionization energy when we remove the second it is called second ionization energy when we remove third it is called third ionization energy third ionization energy is maximum because there less electron more protons attraction more second is less and first is even less for the them the sum total of all this gives the ionization potential or ionization energy how do we measure this the unit of measurement is kilojoule per mole and energy is measured in joule kilojoule per mole now this depends on two factors this ionization potential depends on two factors one is atomic size and other is nuclear charge now we'll see how does it change across a period and down a group and how are these two factors affecting that see across a period what happens atomic size decreases and nuclear charge increases so the force of attraction between the nucleus and the outermost orbit of or the valence electrons is more is increasing as we go the smaller the size the more the nuclear charge 
the more is the force of attraction. So more energy will be needed to remove electrons. Therefore, as we move across a period, ionization potential increases. Now in this particular periodic property, this particular periodic property will apply to inert elements also because we can remove electrons if we supply large amount of energy. So when we talk about ionization potential, we do consider inert elements or elements of 18th group or 0 group. So how will it change therefore across a period? Across a period it will increase. So therefore group 1 elements will have least ionization energy whereas group 18 elements will have maximum ionization energy. So in period 2 which is max which has maximum helium. Uh, sorry, sorry, uh, period 1 which has maximum helium, period 2 which has maximum neon, period 3 which has maximum argon and so on. So um, elements of group 1 will have least ionization energy, elements of group 18 will have maximum ionization energy. What happens down a group? Down a group atomic size increases, nuclear charge also increases. But since atomic size is a dominant factor, therefore what will happen? As we go down size increases, the pull decreases, therefore it will be easier to remove the electrons from the outermost orbit. So less energy is required there. Therefore, as we go down a group, the ionization energy decreases. So for all the periods group 1 elements will have least ionization energy, group 18 will have the maximum ionization energy. Overall if you see the periodic table then which will have the maximum ionization energy? Helium. Which will have the least ionization energy? Cesium. Now let us go to the next one, electron affinity. Now what we have learned in periodic table, I mean in ionization potential, that to add energy to remove electron. Electron affinity is when we add electron, the energy is released from the atom. So electron affinity is the amount of energy re released by the atom to add an extra electron when an extra electron is added to the outermost orbit to convert it into anion because when we add electron atom becomes anion so the amount of energy released to add an extra electron to the outermost orbit of an isolated gaseous atom to convert it into an anion is called electron affinity this also is measured in kilojoule per mole, unit is kilojoule uh, per mole. It also depends on two factors, atomic size and nuclear charge. How does it vary? Across a period, it will increase. Down a group, it will decrease. Why? Across a period, same reason, atomic size decreases. So the pull is more. So if we try to attract, if the pull is more, then electrons can be attracted easily. So when we add electron, maximum energy is released. See, in metals, we cannot add electron. So therefore, release of energy is minimum. Whereas in non-metals, we can add electron. So the release of energy is maximum. So as we go across a period, we uh, the uh, atomic size decreases uh, sorry uh, yes atomic size decreases nuclear charge increases therefore the electron affinity also increases now for this particular it will not apply to inert elements because inert elements are already complete we cannot add any electron to it under any circumstances therefore electron affinity of inert elements will be zero. Otherwise, if we consider the other elements, then same 
inert elements uh, sorry elements of group 1 will have least electron affinity elements of group 17 will have maximum electron affinity 17 or 7a whatever we use say what happens when we go down a group down a group atomic size um, increases nuclear charge decreases so the amount of energy released also will decrease therefore electron affinity decreases down a group so it increases across a period decreases down a group now what happens electron affinity for electron affinity the size uh, Uh, affects the electron affinity atomic size of course it affects all but here it is visible so you see group 2 elements group 15 elements do not normally follow this trend there are exceptions hence if you see the table electron affinity table the values they do not follow the regular trend like other properties do like ionization potential or elect electronegativity does but this electron affinity will have a little different because of this exceptions so now which one will have the uh, maximum uh, electron affinity it should be fluorine so see there is exception i said it doesn't follow fluorine will not have in that 17th group if we take group 17 fluorine should have maximum electron affinity because it is in top of the group according to the rule but actually it doesn't have fluorine has more electron affinity why because fluorine is very small in size so the energy released however big it is considered to fluorine but not to the other elements therefore chlorine will have maximum electron affinity in that particular group period wise of course like in the second period fluorine will have maximum electron affinity lithium will have minimum here in third period sodium will have minimum electron affinity chlorine will have maximum when you go down a group lithium group 1 lithium will have maximum electron affinity cesium will have least electron affinity but when you take uh, group 17 chlorine will have more electron affinity maximum than fluorine that is again an exception that is it is said that it doesn't follow the regular trend let us now see the next property electronegativity what is electronegativity the tendency of an atom in a molecule to attract shared pair of electrons towards itself now where do we see sharing of electrons in a covalent bond so this property is exhibited mainly in covalent bond what happens in a covalent bond a bond is formed by sharing of electrons each atom shares equal number of electrons and it is expected in most cases the shared pair is equidistant from both the atoms but in some cases the shared pair shifts towards one particular atom this is due to the property electronegativity for example take water see the diagram take water water what happens each hydrogen shares one electron with oxygen and thus forms the bond but the shared pair instead of remaining equidistant from both the atoms it shifts towards oxygen atom why because oxygen's electronegativity is more so the tendency of an atom in a molecule to attract shared pairs of electrons in a covalent bond towards itself is called electronegativity it also depends on two factors atomic size and nuclear charge so look at the periodic table then now what happens across a period 
which elements will have a tendency to attract electrons obviously non metals so therefore it increases across a period and decreases down a group why does it increase because atomic size decreases and nuclear charge increases why does it decrease down a group same atomic size increases nuclear charge also increases but atomic size is dominant therefore it decreases down a group so then which will be most electronegative fluorine which will be least electronegative cesium in the periodic table otherwise you see the elements of the left hand side of the periodic table that is the metals of course will be less electronegative and elements towards the right side that is the non metals the uh, group 16 group 17 or group 15 elements will have more electronegativity inert gases do not come under this because they cannot attract electrons under any condition so generally metals are less electronegative they are electropositive non metals are electronegative now metals they have less ionization potential less electron affinity less electronegativity and they are reducing agents non metals they have more ionization potential more electron affinity more electronegativity they are oxidizing agents these particular uh, factors you will uh, need to recollect and remember when you are learning chemical bonding now one more thing you need to learn in this uh, particular under this particular topic that is diagonal relationship what is this diagonal relationship there are some elements of second period which show resemblance of properties with the elements of the next group of the third period placed diagonally towards the right side these elements are called bridge elements and the relationship is called diagonal relationship see period 2 we have lithium beryllium boron carbon period 3 we have sodium magnesium aluminum silicon now lithium it is more like magnesium beryllium is more like aluminum boron is more like silicon the silicon is the metalloid boron also is the metalloid in the second period so these elements this lithium magnesium beryllium aluminum boron silicon these are called bridge elements it is not um, applicable to all few elements these are the elements and the relationship is called diagonal relationship the relationship in which some elements of second period show similarity in properties with the elements of the third period diagonally placed to one another itself towards the right that is diagonal relationship now there are certain topics more topics given in your book that is atomic um, um, number mass number this already you have learned and you need to just go through to refresh your memories and a very detailed um, uh, uh, differences between metals alkali metals and halogens that is group 1 and group 17 elements is given there is not to nothing to explain much in that it is based on all the properties that we have discussed you need to go through it you need to answer all the questions given at the end of the exercise if you have done a good study of the chapter children i am very sure all of you will be able to answer provided you do it sincerely so solve the problems so that when we meet only doubts can be cleared if you read then only you will have doubts if you don't read you won't have doubts
i hope all of you will read this chapter thoroughly and get have a better understanding and knowledge of it that's all for today next day we will start the next lesson till then all of you stay healthy thank you god bless you